From now on, we will be talking about electrons. First, in a free space, meaning in vacuum. Okay? And then, we will put electron in a box. So electron in a confined area. Okay? So there's a boundary from which, through which electron cannot uh, go out. And then after that, we will introduce periodic array of ions in a box, right? In a box, and we will put electron into this. And this is more or less a real materials. We have electron is always moving in a space with uh, peri periodically uh, placed uh, positive ions. And this positive ions, of course, create potentials. Potentials. And this potential, uh, in a very simplified manner, because the electron is minus and the ions are positive, so that it's an attracting potential. So the potential is low uh, at the place of the ion, uh, positive ion. And uh, we have, in a, in a very simplified manner, electron is moving, uh, moving uh, while feeling the potential, which is you know, roughly sinusoidal. You know, it's like a sine wave, okay? And, and the question is, what happens to electrons in this case? I'm writing electron right now as a particle. So, you know, uh, intuitively, if you take this as a particle, or it's just like a, just like a tennis ball, and then you get the idea that, okay, it goes like this, right? Up and down, and up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, Electron, of course, is actually a wave uh, by definition of quantum mechanics. And then if that's the case, this is, a, this is something, something that we have to think about is the interaction between wave and wavy potentials. Okay? So this is, this is something that we're going to learn. And, of course, the wavy potential has a periodicity of the Bravais lattice. So, after all, it is wave of electron coming in, and it's a question of how this wave interacts with periodic potential of the lattice. It's an electron wave, but we have already learned, treated a very similar problem, of the X-ray. X-ray was also a wave. So, so the problem is very similar. But the difference is that, difference is that X-ray was only one wave. But in the case of electron, we have many electrons. So we have to see how many electrons uh, play important role in this, in this treatment. Okay? So that's the idea. And then uh, we will be learning a little bit about the quantum mechanics and then we will move on to how we treat electrons in the, in the metal so that, for example, we can understand why aluminum has aluminum color, how, why one metal is more conducting than the other metals. Copper, has, copper is a better conductor than, uh, I don't know, uh, for example, aluminum. For example, and we'll, we'll ask, we'll try to answer why. Okay. When, and of course, you know, 
why iron is iron, why, why, it, why it is magnetic, and so on. That, that can be solved by uh, treating these problems. So, um, the big, basically, theme is the electrons in solid. But to do this, first, we will just think about electron in a free space. We begin with the, uh, so first, we begin with electron in free space. And let me just write down one Schrodinger equation. And then we have the normal, normal, normal normalization um, condition that So the volume is just from minus infinity to positive infi infinity in x, y, and z direction. Okay. So this, what it says is that we are taking the basically the uh, square of electron wave function, and that equals to one, meaning that pr probability of finding one electron is one, uh, is one. So there is only one electron in the whole space. That's what, that's what we're saying. Okay? Okay? And then because in this case it's a free space, so this is potential is zero. Potent, I mean so it's a free space that in vacuum. And for for the simplicity, we will talk about for uh, in this case one dimension. So, number of square goes to d square, d x square. Okay. And moreover, um, we use simple assumption that. Momentum, this is momentum. It's given by h bar k. h bar is a Planck, con a Planck constant. Okay, momentum is given by h bar k. And also you know that energy of the particle move is, kinetic energy of the particle is one half mv square, just you know, particle with mass m. So if I take this as a mv, then including this into inserting this into here brings uh, gives us h bar square k square. 2m. This is a formula we use all the time. This is a very, this, this is a very useful formula. And because of this relation, um, k is because of this relation, let me uh, let me give you the uh, let me give you the relation between E and K, which is like this. It's a parabolic.
Okay? So this is the relation between energy and the wave vector of the, I can say electron in a free space. And K is wave vector, but also you can consider this as a, as a, as a um, momentum. We will be using K all the time, as you have already seen in a Bravia lattice. Uh, no, sorry, reciprocal lattice, and in Lowe's formula, formula and so on. Okay, we will be using K a lot. Okay. In other words, K is from here, from here, K is given by 2m e h bar squared. By the way, what is K? Okay, what is K? Let's go back to this formula again. Let's go back to this formula. I will move this formula here. Now this formula is, oh no, I'm going to re restrict myself to the one dimension. So d psi dx squared plus to this uh, wave function is given by in the form of You can sort of guess. This and this has double the derivative of wave function psi plus wave function itself equals to zero. That means not the first derivative, but the second derivative of something has to be equal to the, to the original function. Do you see what I mean, right? Second derivative has to be equal to or at least, you know, similar to the first original function. That's why double derivative exponential is still very similar to the original exponential. So you can sort of see, if you plug this in, you know that it, it works. So now we have the answer. And now we will understand intuitively the meaning of wave function. You probably, have you looked at this, have you seen this wave function? Okay, this is, this is wave. This is, uh, this is, for example, this is a wave with positive momentum or positive phase or more positive momentum. That means it's going to from left to right. The wave is going from left to right, for example. Right? This is, a, this is plus K, positive K. But then again, 
Of course, this is, this is x. We have wave with minus k, which goes from right to left. So the k gives you which direction the wave is propagating, and also momentum. Just like, just like x-ray. When we shoot x-ray, we say k is in 1, 0, 0 direction or 1, 1, 0 direction, or 1, 1, 1 direction, right? But it's just the same thing as now, if we define k in 1, 0, 0 direction as positive, then k in 1 bar 0, 0, the opposite direction is k minus, minus k. It's just, you know, positive and negative. And also, k, if you define k as a vector, then of course the size of the vector Length of the vector is a momentum, or uh, okay. Now, what did I mean by this? So, after all, we are trying to describe um, behavior of electrons. Electron wave gives direction, propagating direction, but at the same time, amplitude gives the probability of finding an electron at each point, right? So where the amplitude, so let's just say, here is amplitude. Amplitude. This is zero. So it's a symmetric function, so it has a positive amplitude and negative amplitude. Okay? And usually square gives probability of finding electrons. A, an electron, because this is one electron after all. Probability of finding one electron. So if I take a square, square, then what I get is Square of this is just something looks like this. Ah, there's a phase shift, unfortunately. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I have to put here. It's zero. Okay? So, if this is not moving steady, then at this moment, the electron, finding electron here has probability this much, but there's zero probability to find electron at these positions. Here you have zero probability of finding electron at this position for the given given time. Okay? So this is just all about wave function after all gives you probability of finding electrons. Do you have any question? Is everything clear? Everything clear? So here you, you, see, you may say, here you may say, hey, then, okay, we have probably finding electron here, finding electron here, finding electron here, finding electron here, and so on. But, you know, this is not so realistic because in a, in a crystal, there has to be electron somewhere, right? Not spread all evenly within a crystal. 
So in a real crystal, what we do at the end, in a real crystal, what we do at the end is the following. In a real crystal, what we do at the end is that What we do at the end is that we just add plane wave. That's a plane wave, just you know, one sine wave. We add sine wave of different wavelengths. We add them. We add them. Plus this, plus this, and so on. And only at the center you can see the phase is all amplitude adds up. So we actually, uh, we actually get um, in interference of different waves. And getting, by getting interference, we get interference pattern, which, I don't know, something, which looks something like this. which looks something like that. Like if you add, a, add them up, you know, this plus this plus this is the highest. And then now it looks more meaningful because now this looks like a sum wave with some packet where the position of finding an electron is confined. Right? This way, this looks like a tennis ball. It's a particle. The probability of finding an electron is highest here, but in any case, electron is most likely find or electron is most likely found in this confined region. So this is like a particle too, tennis ball. Right? So this is why electron is particle as well as wave. So this is a duality. Duality, electron is a wave, but also electron is particle. Okay? So we, ju we just add many electrons up to create the electron, I shouldn't, I just, I shouldn't say electron, electron wave function, uh, we, add, we add them up to make electron wave function for one electron. This is still one electron. But for simplicity, throughout this lecture, we will always use uh, so-called plane wave, just sine wave as electron. Because you know we just need to add them up later, but you know it's it's okay to work with this kind of a simple uh, electron wave, and this electron wave is just sine or sine solar wave going left to right or right to left. And always remember that always remember that K is. 2 pi over lambda. We use this all the time, you know, as you know, this is just the same as the one we, uh, we saw before. Okay? So that's a, that's a good start. So this is how electron in the free space uh, behaves. And now we are going to confine electron in a limited region. So you study quantum mechanics probably, yeah? You took quantum mechanics probably, no? 
but at, at KO. Have you taken quantum mechanics? So this is, again, the simple. I will actually, I will confine my discussion to quantum mechanics that are just needed for our, for our purposes. Okay? So now we are going to confine electron in a box. Two, confine electron in a box. So electron is confined in a box. X, Y, Z. Confined in a box means in the x direction. This is zero, this is L, this is L, this is L. So now I give coordinate. Uh, confined in x direction, we have these Nothing special about this equation. This is just the same as this one, okay? And this one was derived assuming that there's no potential. Electron is feeling no potential. And that's, you know, we just assume that as long as the electron is in a box, it doesn't feel anything. It just you know, moves uh, freely, okay? But this is true only for x, is between 0 and L. And we find no electron, no electron at x equals 0 and x equal L. So we find no electrons at zero and L, right? At the surface of the box. So in this case, we have two ways of solving this problem. Two ways. One is that, of course, we can assume, okay, this, we know that this has a function that has to be something like minus ikx plus b exponential plus ikx. And we can try to implement uh, boundary conditions. But, you know, we, uh, you know, you can do that. In fact, uh, all the quantum mechanics course usually asks you to work on this as well as other cheating, not cheating, but much simpler, uh, much simple question where we say, hey, okay, but this is also similar to something like Does this mean? This means I have an x direction. I have an x direction. We have zero, L, and this is x. And we say wave at x equals zero at Right? This is a boundary condition. I've already said that wave 
function cannot exist at x equals 0 nor at x equals L because electron cannot be there, cannot be at 0 or L. That means there's no wave function, no wave at x equals 0, x, oh sorry, x, x equals 0. This is 0 or x, L, right? Then what is the possible? It has to be zero here. Then it has to be zero here. In fact, it has to be zero everywhere outside. It has to be, wave function has to be zero everywhere outside. And wave function exists only here. So the only way for electron wave function to exist is something like this. Right? Or something like this. Because it has to be zero here, it has to be zero here. And the wave that is zero at zero is a sine, sine function. Cosine always has some amplitude at zero. Right, cosine. So, immediately we say B should be zero. We can actually cross out this term. So that's, we just work with this, this function now. We just work with this function. So now we have a sine kx a sine kx and this this automatically assures that zero right because it's, it's a sine wave now we just have to look at we have to, we have to, we have to, we have to make sure that the other boundary condition at L, the wave function is zero. So that's, um, K, L is zero, L is zero, and this is given for k equals to n pi over l. In this case, n is one, two, three, and so on. So now we have I'm just inserting this in back to the original equation. One more thing we have to do is the following. We have to make sure that integrated probability of finding one 
electron is 1 in this region, right? From here to here, you just uh, you need to have elect uh, probability of finding electron 1. There has to be one electron here. Okay? So, needs to be one, right? It's just, you know, you have to, more, uh, you have to take the uh, square, amplitude square has to be one, uh, sorry, this is, um, this is more, this is, sorry, this is more precisely, it has to be zero to L, It has to be, this has to be one, from zero to L, integrated probability has to be one. So, uh, you know, this is going to be zero to L, uh, A, equals to one, okay? And uh, if you do this, if you work this out, you find that this prefactor is just a 2 over L. 2 over L gives you this condition, satisfies this condition. Once I know k, once I know k, I can go back to this. h bar square, k square, plus 2m, right? And then I can just insert n pi l into here. That gives um, e, that gives e n, equals to n square pi square h bar square 2m l square.
So now, this says once we confine electron in a box or x direction, じゃあ、ニエム。うん。ピンじゃなくて。えっと、K。これがあ、K。K So this. Okay. Thank you. So, that, eh? so these are only allowed k's. And now instead of having continuous dispersion curve, we only have certain certain states that are available. Just points. Electron can take this point with this point, with this point. Not between. And that's really due to confinement. That's really due to confinement. I'm only talking about x direction right now, but you know, this is only, this is really due to confinement. And of course, smaller the L, the larger the separation becomes, right? Energy separation becomes, it, because it's inverse. So, in a quantum, mecha quantum mechanic textbook, we always say, okay, We have between 0 and L. At 0 and L, there's an infinitely large, uh, infinitely large barrier. So electron cannot go out of this barrier. Okay? Cannot, cannot go out of barrier. Then in quantum mechanics textbook, we always draw, okay, now, ele energy, el electron energy that can take, that can be, that can be taken or dispersed or, or limited to, for example, this, this energy, this energy here, and this energy here. And this energy here. Spacing becomes larger and larger because n square. Yeah? So that's what we draw very often in a, in a quantum mechanics book. only in one direction. One direction. Now we have to think about y and z direction. You get the same, you know you get same results for, for y direction. You just need to change y from x to y. You just replace this from x, replace x with y or z to get x, y, z direction. And then um, we try to come up with uh, answers, but this is actually quite simple. So instead of, ah, I, I shouldn't have raised this, but that's okay. Let's, let's move on to two dimension.
x and y prime. So, electron is confined in area, 0, L, square. Electron is confined in a square area. If that's the case, the answer is this. Wave function is this. It's simple as that. Here, the idea is very simple. You know, in the x direction, finding electron is 1. So if you multiply the 1 times 1, x direction or y direction, it's still 1 anyway. So we just multiply these two, but replacing x with a y. You're just plugging into the plugging the, this results back here, and here you, you see it's a l square root of two over l. So I'm just doing the square of this. Okay, three dimension, three D. Um, You know, I hate when, uh, when people do this. I hate it when I was a student and when someone said, okay, 3D is simple. You just, <laughs> teacher erase this and it says this is 8L squared and you just add sine NZ pi over LZ, right? <laughs> it, it makes you think whether you're, you need to copy everything down while I'm done, or teacher's done. <laughs> but that's for 3D. So now it's 3D here. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have to put that down here. Yeah, put that here, okay? And E is h bar square, k square, 2m. So it's a, for three dimension, it's a h square, k x square plus k y square plus k z square. Uh, this is not square. Uh, yeah, square, that's good. Times square. And 2m. Yeah. This is just vector, uh, uh, vector size or amplitude. And then this is equals to Two M over H square and X I L square plus N Y pi L square plus N Z pi L square. And that goes to, um, this is something like H 
bar square 2m l square that's n nx square pi square plus ny square pi square plus nz square pi square so it's a uh, h bar square pi square n square um, 2m l square and uh, so this is h square pi And here I use h bar square equals to, um, oh no, there's something wrong. h bar square equals to um, Let me think about this a little bit, okay? So h bar is h over 2 pi. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. So that's the that's relation I use. Um, so density of states. So idea is the following, density of states. Um, you see, after all, for example, um, let's use Q, because I think I've been using Q. In the very first lecture, I said conductivity, electrical conductivity, how well electricity or electronic current conduct in the material is determined by number of movable electrons and also uh, how, how they move, mobility. And mobility is just a, a velocity is mobility times E. So you connect battery and then see how fast electrons move. If the mobility is zero, electron doesn't move. But but also, the larger the concentration, the, the larger the number of charges. So basically, basically that's, uh, that's how uh, electron, is, um, electron moves. And then the uh, question is, we need to find how many electrons there are. Right? We need to find how many electrons there are. For example, if we are if we are electrons, you and I and every, all of us are electrons, and you are sitting on the, on the chairs because you're trying to take the uh, lowest energy levels, all the, energy, all, all the electrons try to take lowest energy levels. Right now, chairs are configura just, uh, configured so that you can all sit in the same energy. Right? So one, two, three, four, six of you are sitting, taking the same energy. But sometimes it's not true. Here I say density of states for this particular, particular energy that you're taking is number of chairs in this room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, uh, uh, 17, so we have total 17 chairs of this level. 
So that's the density of states. 17 chairs for this given, uh, given area. Four, given energy. Here's the, low, here's the energy you're sitting. We have energy, potential energy, that is higher. So if I place step and place a uh, chair here, this chair has higher energy than where you are, right? It, the person sitting on this chair. So we need to find the distribution of chairs as a function of the energy. So that's the density of, density of states, okay? Density of states. Density of states. We had, remember, we had in one dimension, we have energy levels. And, right, some kind of energy levels. And then, um, It was more, more, more like this. Yeah, and then we have density of states, something here, but no density of states at this energy. And then we have density of states, finite density of states, no, density stays here. But uh, basically that's, uh, that's how we want to find the distribution of uh, chairs. And you may have heard already that no two electrons can take single energy. It's, a, it's a, electrons are fermions, so they say, or we know that two electrons cannot take same energy. Right? Except that when you consider spins, you can say spin up, spin up electron and spin down electron is different, so you can take same energy. So you can put two, two electrons in one energy, but then you have to put another electron in different energy levels and so on. So I said you are taking the lowest energy level. For electrons, for ensemble, electron, ensemble of electrons to take lower, lowest energy states, they have to pack themselves from the lowest energy seats. Two here, two here, two here, right? This is very similar to, what is, what is a good example? Um, probably football, soccer is universal. Right? Soccer is universal. Touchdown. One touchdown, American football or soccer. You know, when you go to a uh, soccer game, usually there are seats. There are seats. Right? There are seats. And most of the time, people sit from the very front row, right? S distribution of seats as a function of the height or energy is the density of states. And then these red guys are electrons, so you know they take lowest energy states. And when people, when we run out of people, that's when we stop packing the seats. And there are many empty seats on top, right? And we have to raise the temperature. What happens if we raise the temperature? 40 degrees. Uh, this, is a, this is a main point, of course. People sitting in the stadium were feeling very hot. So they, what happened at that time point is that, of course, those sitting down there cannot move because there are no seats opening around you. But those sitting at the top can actually go to the other seats 
and redistribute themselves so that they have little more space to cool down, right? That's exactly what's going to happen in, in electrons in solid. You raise temperature and electron redistributes themselves to different seats, different seats, right? And now electron can move around. Then that's how conduction occurs. These electrons cannot move. But only those electrons around here can move. And that's how conduction occurs. Right? So we need to know the density of states. We need to know the density of chairs around here. And that's, uh, that's what we're going to do. Okay? So that's, uh, that's the density of states. So I'm going to think um, about, and this is still for the electron in the box. Electron in the box without, without, um, without, without uh, lattice or uh, Bravia lattice. This is just uh, electrons in free space. Okay? So, um, we will do, we will, I will actually draw N, Z, N, X, and Y, because remember from the results we had before, energy is given by H squared 2M L squared times NX squared pi squared plus NY squared pi squared plus NZ squared pi squared. I can. Yeah? Of course, you know, I, I didn't draw this, but this is um, this this meant to be X It's the same thing, right? It's the same thing. And this is considered as N, right? In the previous slide. So now we need to and nx, ny, ny, nz is 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, all integers. So the energy that electron can take is quite dispersed. Here's one, two, three, four, five kind of thing. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So the lowest energy point in this NX, NY, NZ uh, coordinate is this point, right? That's, this point is nx equals ny equals nz equals one. That's the lowest energy. That's the lowest energy. Then you can, you can start adding more points. 
Two, two, one, one is same energy as one, two, one, which is the same energy as one, one, two, right? Right? So two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one. Is same energy as one to one. One to one, which is same thing as one one two, right? But it's all about the distance from the origin. It's all about distance from the origin. So the distance from the origin to the point is energy. Yeah. It's clear from here. And I'm drawing one, two, three, four, five here. But this can be just, you know, this can be 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. We will have to consider so many electrons at the same time anyway, because, you know, we usually in solids, we have 10 to the 20, three electrons. Per, 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 per cubic centimeter. Per cubic centimeter. I and mean, typically we use something of the cubic centimeter. So we have to, we cannot just keep counting one by one, but it just, there, there are so many points where we have to fill in so we have so many points, and at the end, what we get is something like this. At the end, what we get is that, at the, at the end, what we get is that um, n, y, n, x, n, z, something like that. It's just, a, it's just a sphere, one eighth of the sphere, one eighth of the sphere, inside of which is filled with all these points. I mean, you know, you know what I mean, but, right? And there are so many points, 10 to the 20 points, or 10 to, you know, 10 to the 20, 22 points, reaching the surface of the sphere. Okay. Then how do we figure out the density of states? I have, to, I have to define the density of states. Density of the states is a number of, number of states per energy And, and volume. Well, I can say unit energy and unit volume. So usually we say density of states for one square meter of the sample per unit volume, per unit volume, okay? And how many states there are for within certain energy. So for to do this, what we have to do is the following. Okay, so per per energy, how many there are, how many states there are? We have to draw a sphere which is just small just a small amount larger than yellow sphere and this is a you know, the difference between yellow surface and red surface, difference between yellow and red surface is a small difference in energy, delta E, delta E. And we want to find out how many states there are in the region between yellow surface and red surface. I repeat again. We need to find how many states, how many points there are 
in a in a in the volume between yellow surface and red surface. Okay, that's a, that's how to find density of states. So let's calculate that. So let's find out. How many, how many you know yellow surface area uh, area confined in yellow surface right that's number states states I use n uh, is given by or you know you can just say this is n as a function of energy. Because N is just a different combination of N that gives, that gives energy. Okay? So this is just a volume of the sphere and times one-eighth because we're just looking at the one-eighth of the volume. An important point is that there's a one state, remember, here, there's one state per unit volume. There's one state per unit volume, meaning that, you see, this is one. There's only one state in a one square, uh, in, a, in, a, in a cube of one by one by one, right? So volume, equals the number of states, okay? Volume equals number of states. Okay, so this is and that's equal to one over six pi n square 3 half which is equal to 1 over 6 pi h m l square e Here, here, of course, you know, n square is 8m l square e. I didn't say anything about the density of states yet. Now, now I'm going to introduce density of states. Okay? Now, this number is integration from zero to energy times, here I'm going to introduce density of states. This is the density of states. 
that, I'm, that we are trying to figure out. Density states, DE. Okay? After all, you know, we need density states. Okay? Yeah, so um, basically the, that's, this is something that we're trying to, we're trying to, we're, we're trying to figure out. So there's always discussion, but you know, I, I, I'll give you the, the point of discussion. So GE, the density of states, should be given by D and DE. After all, that's, you know, that's what I was talking about the change in the number of states for a change in, a change in energy from yellow to red, right? So we just need to find the number of states in a, in a energy between yellow surface and red surface. Density of states. Yes, unit, but this volume, that volume is in a, in a real materials volume. Okay, so that's the tricky part. It's just a unit energy, we just have to think about unit energy right now. Let's just forget about unit uh, volume. I will come back to the volume part. And then, this is always the, this is always a point of discussion. We always say that's point two times two, because, why do I multiply this by two? Because in each point, we can pack two electrons. Okay? Some people say, this is density of states. Other people say, this is density of states, because each point, we can, so we're, without this, this, this is just a density of points in that area. But now I say, for in each point, two electrons can be placed. So this, because of the spins, up and down. So let's just say that because of the spin, uh, we multiply by two. Okay? So, if that's the case, then So um, now, we come here, so GE, density of states, is something like, here I say 2 times 6, two, I, I multiply by 2, Pi here eight ML square H square three half D D E E to the three half. Right? Because we are now differentiating with energy. And that is just a, you know, this is just, if three half comes in the front, and two six pi, three half, and then um, now e to the one half, after differentiation, okay? And, ah, I forgot to do one thing. Uh, I forgot to do one thing, that is, per unit volume part. I, you know, after all, after all, also, I have to, I have to, then I have to divide this divide this by 
L, L cube. So this is not equal. This is, I, I just put L. Sorry. Divided by L cube. And then that's the E. Um, uh, e three half d e uh, so so that's e to the d e e that's what we have to do because now now by definition I have to not only think about the unit volume but also uh, sorry uh, per 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 energy but also I have to think about per unit volume okay. So I should not. So here this becomes conveniently eight m h bar square l q, right? This is quite convenient. L q divided by l q. So I can erase. L from this equation and then this becomes 4 pi 2 m 3 half Planck constant cube E to the 1 half so here's the density of states results you is the following. So now we now know that density of states goes as a square root of energy. Square root of energy. Square root of energy means means <coughs> square root of energy means If this is energy and this is density of states, it goes like this. Um, it goes like this, right? Yeah, it goes like this. Yeah. So, if I take the analogy of the soccer stadium, soccer stadium, what is interesting is that at the very bottom there is no seat. The number of seats increase As you go down higher and higher up, but that's a that's to the power to the e to the to the e to the one half, not proportional, but e to the one half. Okay. And at some point, it's almost like satellite, you know, it just becomes almost flat because it's flattening. Okay. 
So, um, let me, um, well, I will come back to this later, okay? Um, so here we thought about, we thought about, we derived tensive states using n, nx, n sub x, n sub y, n sub z. You can do the same using k. After all, remember? After all, E is h bar k square k square to n, that is h bar square kx. Same, or, you know, if you want to do this, this is same thing as this. Okay, so you can do the same um, with with k. You can do this same with k, but this time you do k z, k y, k x. And then, now you have to think about a full sphere. Full sphere. Because K can be positive or negative, as I said. K is a wave vector, so it can be going this way. You know, uh, electron wave moving K X Y direction has positive uh, K in this direction. Electron wave, move, wave moving this way has negative Okay. Okay. And remember that Kx is two pi nx ky two pi ny over L Kz is two pi and z, okay? So, um, basically, you have everything now points all these points Points in K space separated by 2 pi L. 2 pi L. You just have to do the same. You see the you see again the diameter or radius, sorry, radius is energy. Radius is energy. And you just need to consider one difference in the point, number of points between smaller sphere, yellow sphere, and the larger sphere, red. You don't have to you, you don't have to do one eighth. This is full sphere, right? For a case, for the case of kx. Okay. And to do this, we just do the similar, same thing. n equals to 2, n equals 2 times
Now you know why I'm dividing by 2 pi over L cubed. There's one point per this, uh, there's one state per unit, this volume. There's only one state per this volume. So this is why, I, we just, I just need to count the number of points in the sphere. So this is a, this is a sphere of the radius k, right? Two is for spins, okay? And by the way, I always use sigma equals to Q and Q and mobility. And here N is number of electrons per volume, unit volume. So N is number of electron per unit volume. V here, V is just L, L cube. V is L cube. And that's just K um, three pi cube. And electrons having this K, electrons at this surface, has a velocity, velocity, if it can move, if it can move, velocity, which is h bar K divided by M. This is just, you know, h, remember, h bar K is like um, MV. This is like a, this is like a, this is like a momentum, momentum. So h bar k divided by vm is a velocity. What else do I have to say? And now we are going to consider a special case, which is very important for the real material. You know, you can, you can, you can think about, um, you can think about, um, arbitrary, arbitrary radius sphere. But the, one of the most meaningful radius is so-called Fermi, Fermi energy or Fermi radius. Have you heard of term Fermi? Yes? Yeah. Yeah, Fermi. Fermi energy is very, there's a very simple definition for Fermi energy. Fermi energy is the energy at which at which you find electron with a probability one half. So fifth, energy where you find you have only fifty percent of the probability of finding electron is a is a Fermi energy. Inside, deep inside, there's always electrons, right? So the inside here, you pack in 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 a real material we have ten to the twenty-two electrons per cubic centimeter. Cubic centimeter. So in, we, we have to pack 10 to the 22 electrons if the cubic centimeter is a, is a unit in volume, right? So inside there, there are so many electrons. So inside you always have a, a probability of finding one, electrons one. But far away, when you run out of 10 to the 22 electrons, far away, just like you know, when I had the seat, up there, you have zero probability of finding an electron. 
only at the boundary. You pack people at the stadium, and where you run out, energy where you run out, you have probability of finding people one half, 50%. And that's the Fermi energy. Okay? So, um, this, I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to define KF. This is a, this is a Fermi wave vector or Fermi, uh, Fermi, um, yeah, Fermi, that, that's fine, Fermi, it, this is like a Fermi uh, radius. Okay? Fermi wave number, this is not vector, so Fermi wave number is more appropriate. Fermi wave number. Fermi wave number. And then, um, then I say, okay, so number of electrons in the real lattice is given by probably about Fermi energy. And velocity, velocity of the electron at the Fermi energy is, a, is, is given by this. It's a Fermi velocity. Fermi velocity. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm doing this again. I'm just putting, adding something to the blackboard. Okay, Fermi velocity. So now, let's try to find N. I'm going to try to find N. N equals to zero to Fermi energy in, because at zero temperature you pack everything, electrons from zero en energy zero to Fermi energy, that's it, you ran out of energy, uh, sorry, electrons. And G E D E and that's zero to Fermi energy 4 pi 2 m 3 half h cube e to the 1 half de and then that's that's from from this you can find Fermi energy is given by h squared 2m 3m 8 pi 3 half. And this is true for t equals 0. This is true, true for T equals zero Kelvin. And then um, let me uh, just give you the importance of what we have done here. Now I'm going to draw, why am I saying t equals zero? Why did I say t equals zero? Why did I say t equals zero? 
I set t equals zero because of the following. I'm going to draw here now energy in a horizontal axis and it's a GE density of state in a vertical axis it goes like this then I define Fermi function, which is this is Fermi energy, and up to Fermi energy, Fe is one, and it's one all the way, and from here it's zero. So one and zero there's a jump. And at the end, I have seen E. This is now concentration of electron. And concentration of electron looks like this. This is this is for T equals sorry. This is for this is for temperature zero Kelvin. Absolute zero temperature. So here's the distribution of seats. And here is the the statistics of how to distribute electrons. <coughs> It's a, Fermi, Fermi, it's a Fermi statistics. Okay? It's very cold, so on a soccer game, of course, people try to pack themselves. So, you know, people are right next to each other. And so, at least you try to keep it warm or try to take the lowest energy possible. In other words, you have no energy to, be, to get excited to higher seats. So, the, you, they pack themselves very low as low as possible, okay? This is firm energy, right? So, electrons are packed up to Fermi energy, and then this is a distribution of the electron. It's the same thing as a distribution of the seats, but then zero here, even though there are seats. Fermi level is here because this is the energy where probability of finding zero, uh, electron is zero and one, so it's the middle is one half, 50%. Okay, that's a 50 Fermi energy. When you raise temperature, when you raise temperature, I will try to do the same. You have this, same thing, and you have. But now, Fermi level is different. Fermi, Fermi level is the same, but Fermi, Fermi energy is the same. This is EF. Okay. Fermi energy is the same, but distribution is different. It becomes like this. One half by definition at the Fermi energy. This is the probability of finding an electron. 
right? Probability of finding electron one or probability of finding electron zero. That's one half at the Fermi level, by definition. And then you can see, because it's becoming hotter and hotter, some electrons goes to higher energy. Right? And in this case, the actual electron distribution looks like this. Uh, looks like this. It doesn't stop here, but it goes like this. Right? So that's the actual electron distribution. This times this equals to this. Okay? And to make the story complete, Fermi-Dirac function is given by Fermi-Dirac function is given by one over exponential e minus e f over k t plus one. So that's a Fermi-Dirac function. Just gives you the probability of finding electron. This one here. And finally, This is a this is a this is a this is the equation for this is the equation for finding concentrations. It was simple for the zero temperature. You know for sure that probability of finding electron is one all the way to Fermi level and zero at the energy above. So you only need to integrate between zero and EF. That's what we did already. Right? I mean not here, but you know, in a when, where I erased the blackboard here. I only integrated from zero to Fermi level for zero temperature. This is not true for finite temperature. Okay, this looks almost zero, but this is a this is exponential function. So strictly speaking, there's always probability, right? It's almost zero, but not exactly zero, because it's an exponential function. But in reality, when you calculate these, you know you don't have to integrate all the way. Okay, and definition of Fermi level. F right I mean it's clear you insert if you make this EF zero this becomes one so one plus one one over one plus one is one 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 half right so it's, it's simple. Uh, this function says higher the temperature, higher the temperature, more this smearing occurs. Right? As you raise temperature, this smearing goes even farther. Yellow is higher temperature than red. White is more higher temperature than red, yellow and red. That's what this function does. Okay. 